Hello everyone, welcome to the video on Pharmacodynamics Basics of Dose Response Curves. Most of the students struggle to understand dose response curves properly. In this video, I have simplified the dose response curves with pictorial representation. Hope this video will be very helpful for the students who are trying to understand dose response curves. So in this video, I am going to explain about affinity, efficacy, potency, antagonist, all of them with respective to dose response curves. Now this is my YouTube channel. I have more than 200 pharma related videos. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share the video. Just type in my name G Sai Rajesh in, in YouTube or Google, you will get the channel. Let's get into the topic. Now first of all, let us understand some of the definitions. See, pharmacodynamics relates the drug binding to receptors or drug receptor interactions are dealt in pharmacodynamics. Now there are certain, certain simple definitions are there like agonist. A drug is called an agonist when binding to receptor results in a response. Let us understand this thing. Binding to receptor is known as affinity. The ability to bind with a receptor, that property is known as affinity. Whereas the ability to get a response is known as intrinsic activity. See, it depends on the textbook. Some of the textbook call it as intrinsic activity. Some of them call it as efficacy. Both of them are used interchangeably. So if a drug can bind to receptor, that property is known as affinity. If it can get a response, it is known as intrinsic activity or efficacy. Now, let us move on to the another one. Antagonist, see, antagonist, it binds with the receptor. That means affinity is there, but no response. It is not associated with response. So no intrinsic activity. So in simple, in simple terms, agonist has got affinity and intrinsic activity. Whereas antagonist, affinity is there, intrinsic activity is not there. Now see, the same thing, affinity is the binding ability. Potency shows, see, potency is a word which describes how the dose exerts a response. Now we'll see with respect to the dose response curve. Similar thing with efficacy, we'll see both the terms with respect to the graphs. Let us get into the topic. Now look at this. So a, a simple dose response curve is like this. So the dose of the drug is in x-axis, whereas the response is drawn in y-axis. So x-axis is the dose, y-axis is response. Now, when you increase the dose, the response increases in this manner. Look at this. This graph is known as hyperbolic graph. Hyperbolic. When you increase the dose, the, the response reaches to maximum and, and it reaches a plateau phase, wherein further increase in dose will not increase the response. Now, in this Give me a second. Now, in this, again, you need to understand what you mean by EC50s. See, effective concentration 50 means the 50% of the maximum response. This is what is 50% of the maximum response given by this dose. So, this is known as EC50, effective concentration 50. That means 50% of the response is given at this concentration. Now, the problem with this kind of hyperbolic curve is the curve is very steep. You can see it is very steeply rising here. So, if it's very small changes in the dose, the response increases rapidly. To avoid this, the concentration is converted into long concentration. When it is converted to long, con long concentration, it gives a sigmoid curve. Sigmoid curve means it appears in a sigma shape. That's why it is known as sigmoid curve. Now, advantage with sigmoid curve is, see, look at this. There is a large, there is a large spread of concentration is there. And EC50, you can easily find out here. And it is not a very linear curve. So, converting into long concentrations will, will tell you how the small dose increase gets a kind of response. So, most of the uh, res uh, dose response curves are sigmoid in shape because it is drawn with log concentration. Now, see, you, sorry, you need to understand this. See, during examinations, this is what is tested. When the dose response curve is between response and concentration, the curve is hyperbolic. Understand this word, this is hyperbolic. But when the dose response curve is between the response and log concentration, the curve is sigmoid. This is what is tested in, co in competitive examinations. Understand why sigmoid curve is required. Now, now based on this, see, this is this is taken from Goodman and Gilman, the very standard book for pharmacology. Now, according to this text, what does it say is receptors exist in a dynamic state. They can be in an inactive state or in an active state. So the, the the change in conformation is what changes them to inactive state to active state. So 
ligand is nothing but a drug which goes and binds with the receptor. Some of the ligands will convert all the receptors into active form, then they are called as full agonist. So look at this, full agonist, a typical sigmoid curve, it, give, it gives maximum response. Whereas some of the drugs will convert majority of receptors to active form, but some of the receptors are in inactive state. You can see this thick arrow, the thick arrow indicates majority of the receptors are in active conformation and they are partial agonist. You can see the partial agonist graph is not a complete sigmoid and it will not give the com maximum response. The response will not be a maximum one. Now moving to the other one, some of the ligands are drugs. There is an equilibrium between inactive con conformation and active conformation. So equally they are distributed and there, will, there won't be any response and they are known as antagonist. You know, we have studied about this in definition. Antagonist bind with the receptor, but there won't be any response. There won't be any response because the receptors in an equilibrium state of active and inactive state. Whereas some other drugs, they completely turn the receptors into inactive state. They are known as inverse agonists. This inverse agonist typically we see, the example is beta carbolins in case of benzodiazepine receptors. They are example for inverse agonist. They completely look at this. The curve is completely came downward. This is what is inverse agonist is. Whereas for antagonist, the curve is flat. You don't see any response. That is why it is flat. So these, these are about uh, uh, all the different kinds of terms and how the dose response curves are. Moving further. Now let us understand what do you mean by relative potencies. Take two drugs, drug X and drug Y. Both of them, the dose response curves are these things. And understand both the drugs are acting on the same receptors. Now, when you see the drug X, you can see the drug X has got EC50 at this concentration. Whereas drug Y, EC50 is at this, at this concentration. Now look at this. Drug X can elicit EC50 at sm smaller concentrations, whereas drug Y needs larger concentration to get EC50. So at low concentration, if a drug give maximum response that is considered as a potent drug. Potency is related to dose concentration. If low concentration gives maximal response that drug is considered as potent drug. This is what is the example is. Understand the, uh, understand the curve. See for drug X this concentration will give you effective concentration 50%. Whereas you need larger concentration to get effective concentration, effective concentration 50 for drug Y. So drug Y is less potent whereas drug X is more potent. See this is what is given. See potency shows relative doses of two or more agonists to produce the same magnitude of effect. This is what is same magnitude of effect. Both the drugs will show same magnitude of effect but drug X needs lower dose. The proximity of respective curves to the Y axis. Understand this one. So drug X is closer to Y axis. The curve is closer to Y axis whereas drug Y it is farther away from Y axis. Again, this is what is tested in competitive examination. When a potent drug curve will be closer to Y axis, this is what is the takeaway message. Again, let me, let me revise this. See drug X, this curve is closer to Y axis because it is more potent. This is what you need to understand. Now coming to the relative efficacy one. See efficacy means the ability to get a response. Efficacy and affinity both of them related. Affinity means the ability to bind with the receptor. If majority of the drug is binding with the receptor, the efficacy will be more. Now look at the drug. See drug X, it is giving maximal response whereas drug Y is not giving maximum response. So drug X has got higher efficacy and affinity whereas drug Y lower efficacy and lower affinity. See a measure of how well a drug produces a response shown by maximal height reached by the curve. See this height will indicate what is the response is. Now, now understand this one. Again, this is what is being tested. The, the maximum height is there with higher efficacy drug. The lower height is there with lower efficacy drug. So understand these curves. Just go through the uh, readings. You will get all the things. Moving further. Now look at this. There are three drugs are given. See, the drug which is showing maximal response is an agonist, full agonist. Now the drug which is not showing maximum effect, they are known as partial agonist. Partial agonist. Now out of this partial agonist, see... The EC50 is given at this concentration for A, so this one has got maximum potency. Potency means at lower doses it, it will show its effect. So A is more potent than B, whereas B is more potent than C. C, C requires very high doses. So this is about partial agonist. See the height is given by effectiveness or efficacy. The closeness to the y-axis is given by potency. So this is what is there. 
Moving to the next one. Now, a, a small comparison. See, when you give only agonist, it will be showing higher uh, higher response. This is what is higher response. At the same time, if you give a partial agonist, when the partial agonist dose is increased, look what is happening. The full agonist response is coming down because of the presence of partial agonist. This is called as duality of partial agonist. That means when only partial agonist is given, it shows some activity like this. See, this kind of activity is shown. But in presence of full agonist, it reduces the uh, efficacy of agonist. That is what is called as duality. So when you use in combination, see what is happening. The agonist activity is still this here. In presence of partial agonist, the efficacy has come down. Moving to the next one. See, this is one of the important things. See, this is about antagonism. We have two, three types of antagonisms. Are there competitive and non-competitive? We'll see here. Now, competitive antagonism, See, to the effective site, agonist binds as well as inhibitor binds. So, in presence of inhibitor, what happens? The efficacy of agonist decreases. In order to get that efficacy, you need to increase the dose. Look at this. See, if only agonist is there, EC50 will be here. In presence of inhibitor, you need to increase the dose. Then only you will get maximum response. So, what is happening in presence of competitive antagonism? If you increase the dose, you will get back that efficacy, but it happens only with increasing dose. Whereas in non-competitive or allosteric antagonism, in allosteric antagonism, agonists bind with the site, but inhibitor binds with an another allosteric site. So even though you increase concentration, you don't get maximum response. Look at this, the red curves are in presence of inhibitor. So the maximum efficacy will not be there by increasing concentration. Whereas in competitive antagonism, by increasing concentration, you will get maximum response understand these curves. Now, the last one, uh, there are certain drugs with, see again, allosteric potentiation it is called as. In presence of this potentiator, the binding of agonist to that site increases and that increases the response. Look at this. What is happening? See, uh, see, he, this is EC50. To get EC50, if only drug is there, this is what is the concentration. But in presence of potentiator, look at this. The concentration is coming down. So they are becoming more potent. See, this is a typical case of benzodiazepines. What is the action of benzodiazepines? When benzodiazepines bind with an allosteric site, GABA binding with the receptor increases and the activity increases. So benzodiazepine is a typical example for potentiation. Now look at the curve. What is happening? In presence of potentiation, the curve is getting closer to y-axis, whereas in, in presence of competitive antagonists, the curve is moving away from y-axis. These are the small things which you need to understand. I, I have put it in a different thing. Now look at this. Say this is the control or normal drug. Now in presence of competitive antagonist, what has happened? See, the curve is moving away from y-axis. This is what is there with competitive antagonism. Whereas in presence of potentiation, the curve is getting closer to y-axis. So this is with potentiation. Whereas non-competitive, you don't get maximum response. This curve. Now understand these curves, you will get everything. Hope I cleared all of the uh, concepts of uh, drug re response curves. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share. Thank you for watching this video.